As an aide taking care of residents living with Parkinson's disease, you control the dining room experience for each and every one of the residents. This presentation will focus on your role in improving the mealtime experience with an emphasis on keeping your Parkinson's residents safe. Meet Parkinson's resident, Sarah. She spends most of her day alone in her room. Hey, Sarah. Hey, you're eating alone. Do you want to come and join your friends in the dining room? Okay. Okay, great. All right, let's go, okay? Sharing a meal with one or two friends in the dining room can provide her with companionship and a safer alternative. Why? Because choking is a major risk for people living with Parkinson's disease. Unsupervised eating can result in devastating consequences. Based on the assessment conducted upon entering the extended care facility, the speech-language pathologist, or SLP, will provide guidance on each resident's requirements as it relates to eating and swallowing. Be sure to review your resident's chart to know and apply this information. If you work in an assisted living community, an assessment may not have been done. It would be considered best practices to ask the healthcare provider for a referral. If a Parkinson's resident insists on staying in their room to eat, staff should be encouraged to remain present during mealtime. Here are some suggestions for assisting your resident while they're eating. Have them eat in a chair rather than in bed. This will ensure that the resident sits up straight while eating, reducing the possibility of choking. Remind the resident to swallow. This verbal cue can help to ensure that choking doesn't happen. Feed them while maintaining the resident's dignity. Don't stand over them or rush them through a meal. And have proper adaptive equipment available such as scoop plates, weighted silverware, plate guards, or a nosy cup that allows them to drink while keeping their chin down. As the frontline worker, take note if a resident does not like their meals or is not eating enough. Let the kitchen staff or dietary department know if it's just a matter of changing flavors. If a resident wants to mechanically alter their diet, such as change from liquid to solid food, that will require a doctor's order. When eating in the dining room, it can be set up in such a way as to provide a pleasant and calm setting. Brighter lighting in the dining room and light music playing in the background adds to the serenity of the dining room experience. For a resident that requires assistance with eating, a separate restorative dining area is preferred. This type of dining area provides a private, more serene atmosphere with fewer residents around. Seat only one or two residents at a table. Remain seated with them and engaged by having general conversation in a way that doesn't distract the resident from focusing on swallowing food safely. Be attentive while feeding or assisting a resident during mealtime even if there is no conversation. Don't talk to other staff during this time unless it relates to the resident's current needs. No medications should be provided while in the dining room unless required at that time. Here are suggestions for helping your resident eat well. Don't rush her to finish her meal. Verbally encourage her to chew food completely and to take small bites. Put the food directly in front of her and give her cues as to what's on the plate. For example, this side is chicken, and in the front are the mashed potatoes. Today, your resident is able to feed herself, but tomorrow may be a different story depending on how her Parkinson's symptoms are presenting themselves. Keep an eye out for any changes you may observe and report those to the doctor or SLP. For a Parkinson's resident, there are certain foods that provide a greater choking hazard or risk of sticking somewhere in the throat. Those foods to avoid include steak, hot dogs, popcorn, peanut butter, and any other food item that is difficult to chew. If a resident insists on eating a food that presents a choking danger, modify the food to reduce the risk. For example, remove the peel on a hot dog and julienne it into slim pieces. Better food choices to reduce the choking risk include filleted fish, ground meat, soups, chocolate which can melt on like a hard candy or lozenge, applesauce, pudding, jello, and lightly toasted bread with butter or jelly. Believe it or not, water can be a common choking hazard since the fluid is so thin. People living with Parkinson's typically have higher hydration needs, so it's important to encourage drinking fluids. If choking on water becomes an issue, let the staff dietitian or doctor know and they may require thicker liquids in order to minimize this hazard. You are on the front line. 
and can observe a behavior change in your resident before anyone else in the facility. For example, your resident has no trouble eating well and then one day they decide to stop eating. Be sure to share this information in the resident's chart with other staff members on different shifts as well as the doctor before it gets to be a significant problem. Every caregiver should be trained on how to deal with choking should it happen. Basic Life Support Certification provides you with the training needed to do the Heimlich Maneuver. That training should also include CPR. Also, if you notice severe drooling, it's an indicator of a more serious swallowing difficulty. Be sure to let the resident's doctor or SLP know about this condition. We've all experienced when food or liquid goes down the wrong pipe. This is called aspiration and occurs when a person with Parkinson's accidentally inhales food or fluids into the windpipe and lungs. Aspiration can cause pneumonia, which is a serious, sometimes fatal complication of Parkinson's disease. While eating, if you notice a change in the resident's facial color, that could also be a sign of what's called silent aspiration. If this happens, be sure to get assistance from a nurse or doctor immediately, or if one is not available, call 911. As just covered in this presentation, there can be a number of reasons why a Parkinson's resident becomes frustrated or embarrassed while eating, causing them to isolate from social situations. This isolation can lead to life-changing problems such as malnutrition, dehydration, and aspiration. Since you take care of these individuals up close and personal, you can catch these issues early. The dining room experience goes beyond the four walls where your residents eat meals. It's a mindset you project and a commitment you have to create a pleasant mealtime atmosphere and provide support and care that keeps them safe. Your positive actions and compassionate care can encourage your Parkinson's residents to get the nutrition, hydration, and social connection needed to function well every day.